Homo floresiensis, the real hobbits. Yes, you heard it right. We're not talking about the fictional character from The Lord of the Rings. That was a shorter version of the human race with hairy feet created by the author J.R.R. Tolkien. It's appropriate to say that they existed and lived on this planet around 100,000 to about 50,000 years ago on the island of Flores, Indonesia. Let's have some insight on the name assigned to this unique species. Homo floresiensis. Here, homo is Latin word for human, and the name floresiensis is derived from the island of Flores in Indonesia where their remains were extracted from. They were discovered in 2003 when a joint expedition was held to look for the evidence of the early migration of Homo sapiens from Asia to Australia, and coincidentally tracked the remains of a small-sized human in the cave of Liang Bao, Flores. Surprisingly, the fossils of Homo floresiensis, also named Hobbit, comprised a large skeleton with a skull and 11 other such parts. The study found out that this kind of species was approximately three feet and six inches tall had small-sized brains but large teeth, forward-bent shoulders without chins, subsiding foreheads, and disproportionately large feet and short legs. Even though they had relatively small bodies and brain sizes, still they used stone tools to light fire and hunt animals like elephants, rodents, and even gigantic Komodo dragons. These stone tools are considered to be 190,000 to 50,000 years old and recovered from different levels of excavation. Since the beginning of the research on the human species, most paleoanthropologists limited their study on humans, Homo sapiens, to the possibility that they had only traveled to New Guinea and Australia from the Southeast Asian mainland. At a later stage, it was discovered that Homo erectus did reach Java, which was earlier connected to the mainland. But the existence of Homo floresiensis on a remote Indonesian island seemed very unlikely and the study of the human race took a different turn after this. Because of the discovery of an extinct human species that had the capability to cross oceans and move to a different, isolated island. It's astonishing to believe that such an undersized miniature of Homo floresiensis with a small brain might be the result of a diminutive structure of the island. The scientists believe that it is an evolutionary process due to isolation on a remotely small island with limited resources of food and also due to the absence of predators that are essential for growth and survival. They adapted to this lacking environment like the extinct pygmy elephant and continued to live on the island of Flores, Indonesia. The evidence derived after the site revealed that Homo floresiensis food included both plants and uncooked meat. Their sharp tooth identifies that they had a sturdy and coarse diet that required powerful chewing. It's also assumed that the use of charcoal, bones of animals, and stone tools to light the fire and hunt elephants like stegodon animals for food, but later it was taken as the traits of Homo sapiens. So the preferable possibility from the remains excavated from the caves is that the Homo floresiensis ate the raw meat of animals present during the period such as a rodent, Komodo dragons, and stegodon elephants. Here we can say that when a small population is separated or withdraws itself from its herd, they are prone to adapt to the new surroundings ahead of them for its survival. In this case of the Homo floresiensis, the kind of environment they were in with limited availability of food pushed this race to reduced energy requirements needed for physical growth and pushed them towards dwarfism. Even the animal remains from Flores and other small islands during that period were also of small stature comparatively. During the initial phase of excavation, a whole large skeleton was found called LB1. It was again difficult to name it so because of the absence of an arm bone for comparison and evaluation. At a later stage, new dating techniques were introduced to study the sedimentary deposits of the caves in Flores, brought the results on the specimen LB1, and even assessed the cause of the extinction of the species. So now the scientists describe LB1 as the type of specimen that was unfossilized and consisted of a relatively complete skull and partial skeleton consisting of leg bones, hand and feet, pelvis, part, and some others in bits and fragments. It was supposedly taken as the body of a 30-year-old female. It was approximately one meter tall and weighing about 25 kilograms. It had a brain volume of 380 to 420 cc approximately and was not properly buried after her death. It was eventually covered by the sediment deposits later. Another type of specimen called LB6 was also found with a partial skeleton of a shorter human than the LB1 with a different facial structure. It was considered to be a five-year-old child with a more V-shaped jaw. Assigning the remains as LB1, which is considered the holotype of Homo floresiensis, is still debated among scientists because few consider it as modern human with a growth disorder or some kind of disease that mutated the form of the body while the other set of scientists classified it as a taxon and completely distinct from Homo sapiens. And the debate continues. Amidst these debates and classifications, the other set of like-minded scientists, 
in 2016 discovered some other remains at Mete Mange, about 70 kilometers east of Lengbao Cave on Flores that comprised the lower jaw and teeth of possible one adult and two children, as is early form of this unique yet similar species, Homo floresiensis. They are expected to be 700,000 years old. After quite a research and hours of excavation, most scientists have now approved and even accepted Homo floresiensis as an allowable and licit species. They suggested that Homo floresiensis could be the progeny of Javanese, H. erectus. But after a detailed analysis of the remains, they found out that its attributes were more anachronistic than Javanese Asian Homo erectus. They had the characteristics of Homo ergaster or Homo georgicus, which is similar to Australopithecines or H. hobilis. Though this is still under scrutiny, as the catalyst analyst shows that there is a direct correlation between Homo floresiensis and Homo erectus. It's also believed that the physical stature of Homo floresiensis, which is small in form with large and flat feet, was comparatively different from the modern human genes. Homo sapiens are encapsulated as a form of a human race, with high and round brain cases, mainly small faces and undertucked foreheads, a lower jaw, a prominent chin, and small brow ridges that are separated from the center, whereas the former had a tiny skull, protruding eyebrows, a small brain case, short height, and obscured chin. Our Homo sapiens have a comparatively narrower jaw than the Florensiensis wide body structure. Is Homo floresiensis a separate human species? The answer to this question is still debatable to a few and acceptable to some. All we can say from a long and difficult search, it's still to be known how they develop their unique set of traits and attributes that makes them a distinct species. It's unexpected discovery that questioned all the previous discoveries and assumptions of the scientists and has opened a new chapter of research on the human existence journey that already had many twists and turns previously. It'll be fascinating to know that another small form of the human species was found later. They are named Homo luzonensis and were found 3,000 miles away in the Philippines. The excavation shows that they are dated back to 50,000 to 67,000 years old. That matches the existence of Homo floresiensis during the same period. However, they do have a few however, they do have few of the common traits, but some other imminent characteristics when combined. Picture Homo floresiensis and Homo luziensis as two separate human species. Such discoveries have provided important information in the understanding of ancient human diversity in Asia and Southeast Asia that are still not explored. At last, from the various research and findings, it can be said that the Homo floresiensis species can be one of the early human race, and their extinction and emergence of Homo sapiens are possibly connected in some way or the other. The traces of Homo floresiensis dates back to about 50,000 years ago, and the appearance of Homo sapiens about 46,000 years ago shows a feasible connection. This proves that the flourishing of modern humans across the globe and the downfall of Homo floresiensis and other such species like Homo erectus and Homo luziensis go back in time. The human race has a diverse portfolio and now and then a new form pops up that astonishes us with its trait and characteristics making us think about our ancestors and our evolution. For more such information and details, do subscribe and like us now.